G'day, Jeff Lewis here from Seriously Series and welcome to another episode of Servicing Your 4x4. Today what I thought we'd look at is the subject area surrounding clutches. And yes, I know this is only one component of a clutch, but what we're going to look at is how to fit a clutch, what you need to look at in regards to the flywheel and the other components, and do you really need to buy a new clutch? Can you actually make a good clutch out of some older components? So we're going to be looking at this in regards to the two and a quarter litre petrol engine for a Land Rover, but obviously the principles behind it are exactly the same as any other vehicle. So if this sounds like a video that's of interest to you, then you know what to do. Stay tuned. So, <clears throat> just move a few tools out of the way. So, I guess the first reason is why would you look at replacing your clutch? Usually, this is because the clutch itself is slipping, and this is usually due to the actual friction material here on on the plate wearing down, and obviously coming somewhat out of sorts with the other clutch components. For me though, I'm actually overhauling or just perfecting a brand spanking new rebuilt uh, two and a quarter litre petrol engine that was rebuilt by Galloway Engines and it's hopefully going to go in the Series 3 here uh, sometime soon. Now we'll look at how to obviously fit it onto the flywheel but I think the first thing that we need to look at is taking off the old clutch and sort of what to look for there. Um, this will sort of tell us a lot about the history of the vehicle, particularly um, this is probably more relevant for those of you who are actually restoring a series Land Rover or a four-wheel drive uh, because it will actually give you a lot of insight into you know, has it been flogged, has it been driven hard, has it not, and obviously also the miles uh, that the motor and the other components have done too. So anyway, we'll get down and we'll actually have a look at the old engine. I've got the old engine here, I've got the new engine here, and just obviously transferring a few parts over from one to the other. And I'll tell you what you need to do to save your old clutch, what we need to do to fit a clutch, obviously doing it the rich man's way and the poor man's way, which sometimes the poor man's way is the best way to go. First things first, the clutch is situated at the back of the engine, as many of us know, but for those of you that don't, that's where it is. And when we actually come to taking off the clutch, if we're going to use it again, because it's okay, or we're replacing the rear main seal, what we need to do is we need to obviously get the plate, I call it the plate, and we need to get obviously a paint marker. And what we want to do is we want to be able to get in to the side of the clutch and actually make a mark here and actually make a mark with what I call the pressure plate. I may have it wrong, but sometimes I call a, a nut a bolt and a bolt a nut. It's just verbal dyslexia. But the reason why we want to make the, that mark is so that we know how to actually put the plate on and where the pressure plate should also align too, so everything's aligned. And that's one of the most important things you need to remember about anything that spins, is alignment and also torque. We need to make sure that everything is evenly torqued up. Now, when we actually pull the old clutch off, we're gonna notice a few different things, and I'll get an old one here and show you. This isn't too bad, it's not great, I've seen a lot worse over the years, but we can obviously see that it's relatively smooth and obviously it's a little bit rusty so it has got a bit hot over the years. Generally what happens is the friction material obviously gets worn away over time and the rivets that we have in here on a real bad, a real bad situation will actually protrude past the actual friction material and that will actually cause damage to the flywheel. 
So that's really what we want to be looking for. Back in the day, or the poor man's way, I guess, you know, nothing against that, uh, you could actually drill out all these rivets and you could actually get friction material in a kit and actually rivet it all back on, make it as good as new and then chuck it back in the vehicle. I have heard also if you're having issues out in the bush and your clutch is slipping, you can actually make up two bits of, I guess almost semi-circle bits of wood, put them on there somehow and then chuck it back in there and off you go again. Don't know how good it would be but uh, might get you out of trouble. But this is generally the one piece of kit that we, we toss away. This is the pressure plate, or what I call the pressure plate, off the old motor. And as we can see, it's not too bad. There's no real bad score marks on it, so the clutch hasn't been slipping. It may have slipped a little bit, but not that much. We've got a little bit of grease or muck around here, which is probably from a bit of a leaking rear main seal, which is pretty common. It just It's rust prevention, that's all it is. But the, these pieces here are actually really worthwhile keeping an eye out for, particularly if you've found a shed and it's just littered with Land Rover parts, like Aladdin's Cave, and it does happen from time to time. The way the pressure is actually um, put onto the plate is through a series of springs behind this here. And what you need to do, if you want to use a second hand one of these, is just go around and actually inspect the springs. You want to make sure that they're obviously not broken, and they're not obviously wearing thin, which can also happen too. Now, if we're going to obviously use a second hand one of these, or we just want to touch up the clutch a little bit, what we need to do is we obviously, if we're going down the rich man's way, we will take this to a machining shop and they will very carefully mill around this here and just take the glaze off because the friction material from the plate breaks down to form a powder creates a glaze effect on it a little bit like what you get with um, disc brakes I'm just going to put that down, it's a bit heavy and that's one of the key problems this glazing effect you get it on the pressure plate, you get it on the flywheel. So when we come to actually fitting a new clutch, the best way to do it, and the rich man way to do it, is to take the flywheel off, take it to a machining shop, and actually get it milled. Now, some of us can't afford to do that, and for the past two vehicles that I've replaced clutches on, I haven't been able to afford to do it myself. So what I've done is I've used emery cloth, or wet and dry and I've used it at about 120 grit and then I've just very very carefully over hours and hours gone over the entire flywheel and then I've gone up to 180, 200, 220 I think up to 400 grit so very very fine and just made sure I've got all that glaze off and it's just an even finish all the way around I've then fitted the new clutch and I haven't had a problem but it's the risk that you run that if you don't do it right you'll drop that clutch and then it's going to start shuddering and it'll just behave like a bag of bones so that's the risk that you run by going down that road but if you do it right it's as good as getting it machined anyway this is going on to a new motor and it's obviously got a wonderfully machined uh, new flywheel so we don't have to worry about any of that I'm going to touch on just one more little tip and trick that you need to do uh, before actually putting the clutch onto the flywheel and this is a big one and when you're at your next Land Rover rally and you're having your cup of tea and your lamington you'll be able to pick out this noise and you'll go I know what that is so we'll have a look at it yeah so please excuse the light I'm doing best I can it's a little bit tight down here so we've got the beautiful flywheel there just absolutely wonderful silky smooth obviously we've got the little holes round here which is where the bolts go in to actually hold the pressure plate and then obviously the plate the friction plate 
in here is what I wanted to talk about. I'll get you in a little bit closer and you might just be able to see. Now we can actually see and I'll try and point to it with my pointer just in here is in fact a brass bush. This is known in my terminology in Urban Dictionary as a spigot bearing. Now this spigot bearing is made of brass. Before we actually fit it to the motor what we want to do is we want to soak it in oil overnight. Now I'm sure the gentleman who put this together did that but just to be on the side of caution and if you forget to do it yourself you can obviously use a bit of high temperature bearing grease and just smear it in, in there like so. It does the job, it's not quite as effective, but it does do the trick. Now when you knock the spigot bearing in, one thing we all know that you have to be careful of is not to knock it too far, because then, well it's just lost for all eternity in the motor and you've got to take it all apart, so it's not cheap and not cool so don't do that <coughs> so my advice for that is if you're getting to the end of the day or end of the job and you think I'll just knock that in quickly go away have a cup of tea come back and tackle it with a, a fresh outlook on life anyway um, we'll move away and have a look at a few other things okay, so the next thing that we want to do is obviously make sure we can get this and the other plate lined up with the hole for the spigot bearing. And many of you are going to say, oh, I know exactly what to do. You can use a clutch aligning tool. Well, that's how the rich men do it. And uh, I'm lucky enough, I've gone and spent the $40 Australian to do this one job. And then I'll probably never use it again. But anyway, that's just me. But if you've got, if you're time rich and cash poor, there are other ways around it. You can actually use a I think an output shaft of the gearbox, they're about yay long. And once again, if you're in a shed that's like Aladdin's cave and it's got old clutch parts and gearbox bits, look out for the output shaft. It works perfectly as a clutch aligning tool. Because obviously, that's what the clutch sits on. Didn't see that coming, did you? Now, if that's not feasible for you, you can actually get a bit of dowel that is roughly the same circumference as this hole here and you can sit there and have fun for hours literally hours and hours because what you can do is get electrical tape or a oh yeah, or some people call it duct tape or whatever tape nevertheless and you just wrap it around the dowel again and again keep trying and trying and trying until you get it right and then you've got a bit of dowel that's the right size and then you'll never use it again and if it doesn't work you can burn it so you know and you don't feel so bad because you haven't spent 40 bucks Australian on it but anyway that's just a little rant there so there, there are a couple different methods but what we want to do is we obviously want to get one of the fittings so we can fit it into this spline here and then obviously tighten it up and that'll hold it in place, centralise it, and then lock it in. Now there's a couple things we need to do before we actually put the clutch onto the motor. I know this is a bit of a long-winded video, I do apologise, but do it right, do it once. What we need is methylated spirits, and because all new parts usually come with a coating of oil, we want to get rid of that. It's very much exactly the same as your brake pads. You get any oil or grease on this, and what's going to happen? It's going to slip. We don't want that. That's the whole point we're putting a new clutch in. So we want to get methylated spirits. We want to get it on a rag. We want to clean the flywheel. We want to clean the my version of the pressure plate. And then by doing that, we know we've got a clean, pristine surface. We then put obviously the clutch aligning tool in place and then we're going to look at actually putting it on the flywheel and then we're pretty much done. So this is the clutch aligning tool and I've explained some of the different ways that you can actually make one of these up. Now we've got a couple of adjustments on it 
as you can see here. I'll move in a little bit closer to the camera. So this brass little knob here, if we turn that, as you can see, it's pulling this here. Obviously at the end it's split, so the further that this brass shaft moves in, this obviously, this flange here, or split tube will actually move out further and that will engage with the spline that we've got in the plate or in the drive plate depending on what school you went to. We've then got further adjustments between the actual this little knob here and this one here. Once we've got the drive plate engaged, we then want to get pressure, a pulling pressure on that to then sit on the actual pressure plate here, then making it all one unit. And I'll show you how to do that now. The reason why we want to do that is obviously we want this to be aligned. So then when we put the shaft from the gearbox through, it'll go straight through the pressure plate, through the drive plate or the plate, into the spigot bearing or the back of the motor. So, as I said, I got a little bit carried away. So after getting the clutch aligning tool right, I've then placed both the pressure plate and the drive plate, or the plate, on the actual flywheel. The brass rod, or the end of the brass rod, basically locates into the spigot bearing or the back of the motor. And then while holding it there, you then locate it on these small dowels which are on either side and obviously around the circumference of the actual clutch cover, which is this tin piece here. So with that, you can sit it there and then just going around, just doing them up finger tight, you've got these 7 16th bolts, which is probably about a dozen or so. Now, one of the things I'd really suggest is get yourself a torque wrench. If you don't have a torque wrench, uh, find a friend, a helpful friend that does, and worst case scenario, you can pick up a very cheap rudimentary one from any good automotive store. So once you've done that, um, you obviously want to get the right torque setting, which I believe is 22 foot-pounds. Uh, you can convert that into Newton meters if you want to get fancy. But what you may also have noticed is I've done them up, but they're all covered in white. And this is a little trick I learned off a friend of mine, uh, Ben. And this is basically, once they're torqued up, you put a little bit of paint on it. And they're actually meant to resemble a cross, but didn't really work out that way. But anyway, by doing that, visually I can see, and I know for myself, that they've all been tightened up to the correct specification because if they're not, and I put the motor in, a lot of bad things are going to happen. So, anyway, that's, that's pretty much that. So anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this video. I know I've probably waffled on a little bit, but the, the old clutch is one of those things that you really want to get right. Um, if you get it wrong, it can just cost you hours and hours of work. It's a big effort taking a motor out, and it's an even bigger effort taking a transmission out believe me obviously I've done it and I've done it a few times too so anyway hopefully I've got the message across but if you are enjoying the content here at seriously series then please do consider checking us out on patreon by clicking on the patreon icon that should have popped up on your screen now and if that isn't your cup of tea then do please consider visiting our website at seriouslyseries.com.au and via that you can support us through PayPal and if you're new to the channel please be sure to click on the subscribe button down below, click on that notification button too, and that way you won't miss out on one single video. Anyway, hope to see you in our next video.